morning. Welcome to another video, everyone. Today, you're going to be coming along with me for my training sessions, and also I'm going to be answering two questions that were left in the comments section below. The questions are very relevant to the period of time that people are in right now with their training, so I think it's a very relevant thing to address, and hopefully I can help you guys out with the answers that I give. It is Saturday and I want to be uploading tomorrow, so I need to film, edit and do everything tonight and tomorrow morning so I can upload. That is completely my fault because I'm an idiot and I didn't do any videoing during this week. So I can't blame anyone else but myself. But anyhow, let's have a good day. As you can see, my first session of the day is a treadmill run session. Like I said earlier, I will be answering two questions today. And as the title um, shows, it's gonna be five tips on winter training. I'm gonna come on to that later because those five tips pretty much answer the second question. This first question I'm gonna answer is from Kieran Dixon. And he says, nice video, Harry. Could you please do a talk on how training intensity and focus varies throughout the year, please? With winter approaching, it would be good to hear your thoughts on periodization, etc. For someone like me, who's reasonably new to triathlon, keep the content coming, smiley face. Uh, this was a comment a while ago on my last full day of training video. Now, thanks very much, Kieran, for the comment. What I would say is planning is incredibly important, and a lot of people, just gonna up, this speed a bit because I'm meant to be doing a warm up, not a walk. Uh, a lot of people make the mistake of planning from where they are now, whereas what you should be doing is planning backwards from where your races start. So, first thing you need to do is think about what races you want to do next season and when they're going to be in that season. From there, you plan backwards instead of from here planning forwards because you might end up peaking too soon or you might end up not being as fit as you wanted for a race whereas everything needs to revolve around the races that you're doing next season whether they're A races, B races, they're training races, whatever it is establish that first and then you can plan from there so with regards to periodization a general rule of thumb and this isn't the be all and end all this is just a general rule um, and every athlete's different has what works better for them but what you have is your last race of the season, you have a bit of time off, which is what we call the off season, and that can be anything from two to four, to four weeks, maybe even six weeks if you really want that off. Um, and then you go into a prep phase, which is basically a bit of training that's kind of two to four weeks, where it's just unstructured training. So it's getting your body moving again, doing those short rides, those short runs, those short technical swims, but not really that structured, especially the bike and the run stuff. The swim stuff focusing more on technique, but the bike and the run stuff just getting the body moving again, unstructured. The next phase is your build and your strength phase. And that's the biggest phase over the winter. That's where you make all your gains for next season. And it's one of the most important phases. And that is anywhere between 12 and 16 weeks. And you can I mean, it sounds like a really long time, it's quite daunting, but you can really mix it up, do loads of strength work. Uh, so things to think about would be on running, doing hill sprints and hill efforts, um, focusing on swimming technique, but also pull and paddles, um, short, sharp efforts, stuff like that. For biking, um, maximal effort stuff, over gear stuff, and also 100%, like I said in my last video, working on strength and conditioning. Doesn't need to be a lot, but it, it will help you massively. And then after you've done that 12 to 16 week build, um, strength and build phase, then it goes into your race specific build phase. Now that's anywhere from six to eight weeks, and that's then 
taking that strength that you've built over the winter and implementing that into race specific efforts. So let's say you're doing middle distance or 70.3, you'll do more sweet spot style efforts on the bike, you'll do more half marathon um, effort, style efforts on the run and similar thing in the water, you'll be working at that sort of same intensity that you will be in the race. That's your race build phase and then your race peak phase which is anywhere from I'd say two to three weeks, maybe four weeks, where you want to really be peaking for that race. This is given that it's your A race. If it's a race that you want to train through, then you wouldn't have a race peak phase. But if it is an A race for you, then yeah, two to potentially four weeks peaking, still working on those really intense race specific efforts. Um, and that is the way to break it down. So I'll jot down in this video all those different phases and like I said what you should do is think about what races you want to do, take those chunks of time and those phases and work backwards from there. So I'm just going to go in and start my first interval now. The session I've got today is four lots of eight minutes of tempo pace with 60 seconds recovery in between. So it's a pretty chunky session. Uh, I'm going to put the treadmill at 17. That looks like about 331 per kilometer. Um, I'm going to see what this is like for 8 minutes. Then, probably going to have to a little bit in the next few reps. So that's the run session done. It was pretty grim, but, uh, but got through it and held good pace. Stuck it at 17 for the whole thing actually. Um, felt good, did bike towards the end, but was controllable, so good session. And let's move on to the next session. Here we go. Hello again. So we are on the bike session. It's a steady long ride after that hard run session I had this morning. This gives me a chance to run through the second question that I wanted to answer and the five top tips for winter training. So the next question is from Owen Steer. He says, hi Harry, another great video. Given that you were at uni and many of us watching are students, a video about balancing your training and studying would be awesome. For example, how many hours were you training and studying, etc. So with the hours, it was a roughly 15 to 20 hours per week. That was kind of my sweet spot and I, I couldn't find that I could train much more than that because actually student life, going to uni, like it, it's pretty much a full-time job, especially in your third year when you're working really hard to try and get the best grade as possible. That's then gonna lead me on to my five tips because these five tips, they're not just great for winter training, they're great for training in general, whether you're training for something specifically or just to be fit but they're also a great way to get your training in around your studying. Tip number one is consistency is king. It is far better to do little and often than a lot and not very often. So even just doing 30 minutes to an hour every day is so much better than doing nothing during the week and then getting to the weekend and absolutely smashing yourself. You get so much fitter. Oh God, there's a dog. What's the hell? <laughs> you get so much fitter, so much quicker, and it's so much more beneficial to you, and there's less risk of injury as well. So that's tip number one, consistency is king. Tip number two is get up early. Now I know that sounds stupid, and you know a lot of you would be like, well, what about my sleep and all of that? Um, but let's say you are doing one session a day, it is so much easier to get up and get that session done than it is to have a bit more sleep, get to work, come back home and know that you have to do that session and it's dark and it's cold and it's normally wet and horrible in the UK. So just putting the effort in to get up that bit earlier, get the session done because then you know when you've come back from work you can just chill out. Next tip I want to talk about is planning your training. 
Uh, so if you've got a coach or someone who's telling you what sessions you need to do, that's great because you don't need to worry about it. But if you're self-coached, planning your training is so important. And I know I talked about periodization earlier on in the video, but actually putting a plan together of what you're gonna do each day, what session it's gonna be, what type of session it's gonna be, is so much better than getting up on the day and going, oh, do I fancy a bike, swim, run, gym? Because your training just won't be as specific and I can guarantee over the winter, you won't get as much done. Set yourself micro goals as well. So this is a bit of an extra tip on top of this one, is set yourself a micro goal. So maybe it's, okay, you work in a four week block and you do three weeks of building, one week recovery. Well, over the winter, it can get really tough. Why not include a rest day every single week? And that's almost a micro goal. So you know, let's say every Friday, I need to get to Friday, then I can have a rest. And that gives you motivation to get all your training done so you can just chill out on that day. So the next tip is something that's kind of similar to the first one. It's quality over quantity. It's so much better getting more quality in than more quantity. Now I know a number of you are long distance athletes and you do need to get a degree of quantity in. I completely understand that. But actually at this point in the season, it's good to get a lot of quality in. And just to add to that quality over quantity stuff, think about the amount of garbage training that you're doing. You know, every training session needs to have a purpose, whether it's, and it might be that it's an easy run and you're running at six minute kilometers for 30 minutes, active recovery, that is a purpose. By, by no means am I saying you should just do hard sessions. What I'm saying is every session needs to have a purpose and if it doesn't have a purpose, scrap it. Last tip number five is train with others, especially on the discipline that's your weakness. Train with others, train with people that are better than you. They will push you to be so much of a better athlete. You will keep motivation through these horrible winter months and you'll be so much stronger come next season. So that's it from me. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope I answered all the questions and I hope you liked the top tips that I gave you. Uh, please comment below, please like, please share, and please subscribe if you haven't done already. I think that's it. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my ride and I'm gonna leave you to it. Have a good one.